Well, here we are at the AI Summit. With me today is Kurt Mugel from Data IQ, Chief Customer Officer. So, welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. It's, uh, so, it's really great to be here. So, you're dealing with customers. What are you hearing these days from customers? Well, so uh, the main themes that we're hearing about they're they're multiple, right? It, it, I, I think that the the fact that there's value in AI, there's value in data, nobody's asking those questions anymore. The questions are all about scale. Uh, how do you generalize the technology? How do you get more people involved in that process? And then of course, how do you, how do you manage it then at that scale? Uh, it's one thing to manage a team of experts who have a high level of trust, uh, you know, who are highly trained on the underlying technologies. It's another thing to manage then, you know, thousands and thousands of individuals who may be doing these more advanced uh, techniques for the first time. Um, so we, we wrap that up into a broad theme of uh, governance, AI governance, um, which is also a really, uh, really hot topic these days as well. So where do companies start with this? I mean, all of a sudden mm -hmm. there's this proliferation of data because of, of connected devices. Sure. Do, do they one day just wake up and say, we've got a data problem? Or do they, <laughs> is this like the slow burning frog, frog thing where it's, it's like eventually they just explode? Yeah, no, um, so actually uh, just, just earlier today, uh, I had uh, that very uh, very question uh, from, uh, you know, from, from a company, uh, manufacturing space. They, they haven't done too much advanced data work yet. Um, and that was precisely their question, is, is where to start. And so my recommendation to, uh, uh, to that person um, was to identify you know, a, a use case, an internal application, which is going to have some sort of relevance to their business, which technically is going to be feasible. Um, but ultimately, that motivation from the, uh, uh, from the company to, to work on this, you know, there's a strong external pressure that everybody's doing it, so we, uh, you know, we, we, we need to not be left behind, which I, I think is valid. Um, but also then just a, a growing consensus that uh, you know, the, the successful companies of the future are going to be able to leverage their data, and going to be able to generalize the uh, use and analysis of their data within their organizations, um, and ultimately do things which are of greater and greater value for, uh, for their business. Um, what we're seeing is that really most, most companies really are convinced that that's necessary, but to your point, they really are struggling with how do we get started and you know, where do we, uh, uh, how do we take it to, then to the next level. So when you go into a company that's relatively new at this, do you find that their data is kind of a mess? Is it all over the place? Is it not correct? What, where do you, like, what, what, like, what do you find? Well, that's true for every single company. <laughs> it's a mess, the data's all over the place. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, we used to think that you need to, you know, we collectively, um, you know, used to think that you needed to have very clean, highly structured data to work with. What we're seeing now is almost a paradigm shift in the uh, in the thinking that no matter what, the data is going to remain messy. And even if you were to perfect your existing data, at some point you're going to introduce new data that's going to be more messy, um, and you're just going to be at, uh, back at ground zero. So I think what we're working with our customers to to see is that it's okay to have messy data. You don't necessarily need to get everything in a structured, highly structured environment on the data side. However, your work on that data and coordinating who is working on what on top of that data, that requires a lot more thought, a lot more planning, and a lot more structure. So what does Data IQ actually do with this data? Like, like, what do you do when you start? Oh, sure. So our platform, what it allows you uh, to do is basically it's a it's a toolbox for uh, for different users within uh, within an organization. What's unique about it is that it allows users of different skill levels, different personas, if we're thinking in a product management uh, point of view, uh, to come on and use that platform to access their company's data, and of course to do things on it, and generally to do more advanced things than they would have been able to do previously. Um, and so it appeals to you know, data analyst profiles, people who, uh, who have been using often uh, no-code platforms uh, in the past. It appeals also though to the PhD data scientist who, uh, who can use some of the visual interface or just be in a full code environment as well. It's a very ambitious product positioning, but ultimately that's where there's a lot of the value, is in the fact that we're you know, willing to build a common platform for multiple different individuals uh, to then go and do more with their data, which can be anything from data analysis, um, data cleaning, data pipelines, uh, all the way out to machine learning, deep learning, um, and the management of those, uh, uh, those models when they're out in production. What about ethics and, and, mm. um, and AI and data and, like, and bias? Where does all this fit and come out? Do people realize it? They do. Uh, so uh, I'm, of course, being somebody who's working in the industry, you have to ask yourself, 
what am I working on? Hey, am I doing something good uh, for, uh, for the world? Am I part of the problem or part of the solution? Um, and I'm reassured to see that there is growing awareness uh, around those, uh, those topics, which I think is absolutely the, uh, the right thing. The, the worst thing that you could have happen with AI would be to take you know, the, the biases of the past, uh, encode them in machine learning models, and then scale them out. <laughs> you know, scale it out over you know, uh, uh, you know, millions of new people um, and just project that bias out upon them. Right? That, uh, that's terrible. That would be a terrible outcome. Um, and so what we do about that, uh, specifically at Daydaiku, is, well, one, develop functionality within the platform to allow our users to identify risks of bias. Um, we uh, 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 develop uh, capabilities so that the, let's say, the, the management in the organization can then have oversight on what's being done to make sure that nobody is, you know, even uh, uh, inadvertently doing something that they should not be. Um, and then uh, finally, and perhaps even more importantly, is we have a dedicated training uh, program on what we call responsible AI, uh, which takes into account both the ethical dimension um, as well as other dimensions as well. So it's, uh, uh, it's something that we hold really co close to our heart. We, you know, we, we truly believe in the, the, the potential, uh, the positive potential of AI, uh, but we certainly have our eyes open to the, uh, to the negative potential as well. So everything we can do to mitigate that risk and maximize the positive uh, benefit, we're here to do that. And does, can your technology actually catch uh, human bias? Yeah, so there are techniques uh, which, uh, which allow you to say that, look, the, you know, the data that you're, you're developing, you're training this model on, um, it, it looks like it may be biased in a particular way, and you may not have noticed that, but you should probably go and have a look. Um, you know, the machine doesn't know for sure, but it can say that this indicator, uh, you know, this variable, looks like it might be a little bit out of whack compared to what might be, uh, what might be ex uh, uh, expected. And now, that's not necessarily technology that we invented. You know, there's different, uh, there's different techniques to, uh, to do that. But what we do is make sure that we package that into this very easy to use platform um, so that anybody who's developing you know, any sort of AI product is going to have you know, just an easy of a time and maybe even you know, uh, can't miss the, you know, the, the bias analysis to say, okay, is what I prepared actually relevant um, to my business problem and respectful of uh, you know, the, the ethical norms that, uh, that the organization wants to, to maintain. So at the AI Summit a year from now, what are we going to be talking about? Ah, good question. Uh, good question. I think, um, I think these questions of governance are going to be uh, all the more important, and I use that term uh, rather broadly. So it, it encompasses, uh, of course, both data access, privacy, ensuring that only the right people have the right to, uh, right access to the different data sources. Um, but then there's also a positive aspect to it as well, which is how do we ensure that we're reusing uh, data? How do we ensure that we're, um, you know, that we're, we're operating as efficiently as possible? You know, there's a really interesting question uh, uh, in, you know, as part of the broader ML ops discussion around um, not just how can we automate the detection of a model being uh, needing to be retrained, but rather, how can we do a ROI-based uh, decision to say that this model has this much benefit, but it's going to cost this much to, to retrain? That's really a governance question for us. Um, and so I think that next year, that's, that's probably going to be a, a, a headline topic. Well, I look forward to that discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> Appreciate it.